Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, for the regular meeting for August the 16th, 2022, and I call this meeting to order. Result of the agenda for the August 16th, 2022 regular meeting, council be adopted, moved by Councilor Deloria, seconded by Deputy Mayor Mentoni. <clears throat> Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. And we have Councilor uh, Morio attending by video, and Councilor White is uh, absent tonight. Result of the minutes of the August 2nd, 2022 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, moving on to receptions and delegations, 4.1. We have with us tonight, Swan Valley Agricultural Society. Welcome. If you want, you can come forward, bring your chairs or come forward and, and uh, okay. <clears throat> introduce yourselves and then uh, okay, welcome. Hi, I'm uh, President Austin Anderson. This is past president Brent Williamson, past past president. Um, Evelyn Immerker and Vice President Leslie Sembaluk. Brent's going to start. Um, do you want to start with a small item or the big item first? Wherever you feel comfortable. Okay. The small item. Um, after the fair, we get the uh, the midway people as pile up the garbage in a couple, three spots so it's easier to pick up. So I went and I picked it up with a dump trailer. Now the town would haul it away if it was in the dumpster. But then I would have had to handle it twice. Once into the dump trailer and once into the dumpster. So I just hauled it to the dump and I said, this is town garbage. Trying to trying to be efficient, save the you know the town, the garbage truck and three men that don't charge us for hauling the garbage to the dump. I didn't think that was very efficient, but anyways, that's what it is. And have you spoke with? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay, <clears throat> it wasn't much, but it, and I explained where this garbage came from. Like the town would have had to use a one truck and three employees to, to pick it up. So I just figured, well, I'll just do it myself. Usually, yeah. cheaper. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, anything, that's- Anything like that, you maybe talked with, with Mr. Harvey. Okay. And, uh, and communicate with them and so that if there's anything- that But I didn't see. think it was, they charge for everything that goes across, like even our truck. Oh, really? It's charged, yeah. Okay. And it's paid over another account. Okay. This I didn't realize that even your trucks were charged. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll worry either. about it then. Two. It's your next item. You go ahead. Your big item now? No, you're going to you're gonna lead off with the, <laughs> start with the good stuff. The good stuff. Everybody was happy with the fair this year. Very well done. Lots I of you guys did a really good job getting it going, especially in a two-year hiatus or yeah, three, I guess, but uh, getting it back on track again. I made some comment, you know, during the opening where you did a really good job and and setting it up for something even better for next year. But you no, know, good. You guys all need to pat yourselves on the back and, and your, all your volunteers that helped out with that. <clears throat> yeah, all the volunteers, they they did a wonderful job. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll lead with that. Uh, we had quite a bit of vandalism on the grounds, uh, mostly to the Kinsman booth 
and the Kenville booth and uh, our main office. But most of the damage was those two food booths. And we had to do a lot of kind of, uh, what's the word? Please run your food booths again. And they did put, like the kids and put a lot of money into their food booth to get it operational in the Kenville booth. Did a whole bunch of work to theirs. And then last week, um, I think Evelyn told me that that even like a week after the rodeo, the Kinson booth had had an attempted break in and the Kenville booth had been broken into again. So we're, we're just concerned about crime. I think that's our main focus of our session today is what we can do about crime in that area to reduce it. And, and some of the things that we want to do is put in a couple of yard lights above those food booths as one of our projects, try and shed some more light and we're wondering if maybe you could put some more lights on the back of the Centennial Arena because there is some uh, defecation happening back there between the outdoor rink and the main arena. And maybe if there was more light, possibly that it would solve that. And just, I think, more light everywhere on those grounds. And when people, police are driving by or, or anything, um, they'll be able to see, you know, trespassers. We've had, we know we have improvements to do on our gates and stuff like our fence could be tighter, but I don't even know as far as like walk-in traffic, if there's ever a way to keep them out. Like even on rodeo weekend, we had people bellying through a mud puddle to get in under like a 10 inch gap like this. They went through a mud puddle to avoid gate fees right by the curling rink there. So they'll pretty much slide through anywhere, but um, do you have any comments on the, the light, I guess starting with the lighting? Okay. Um Anything from administration on the fact of the arena and extra lighting? That's what you're asking, right? Yeah, that's my main thing is if we get more lighting shining from the Centennial Arena out towards the outdoor rink. The outdoor rink is lighted, right? Yeah. But even from the top, if you could have more lights, yard lights or something that lit around the outdoor arena, um, and maybe it's sufficient. I'm just thinking that would be an easy, like a available place for the town to add some light to that area. And I know that the town employees were complaining about people going to the bathroom and like next to the, pretty much on the Centennial Arena, like shitting on it. So that would kind of uh, maybe help with that, or maybe they don't care. I know that in the park we added some brighter lights uh, to the to the uh, Jack Brown there, but Mr. Harvey, you had. I was just gonna say definitely. <clears throat> like, we've had the RCMP here. They've said that lighting helps because then we can see <clears throat> easier when people are there. So it was just a general comment as far as to the arena. <clears throat> I have to check with the director for door check on that, but uh, I'm sure you can get a response for it. Okay. Quick. The lights can be done. It simply comes down to cost and installation and operation. So is that the something that can't be done? We can do it. It's yeah. So is that something I follow up with, Mr. Fedorchuk, or is that get kind of from here it gets into the minutes and it's followed up with that way? Yeah, I mean, uh, he's Dr. On, he's Fedorchuk on. is on here right now, but it would be something that uh, he will be speaking with uh, CEO okay. Pool about. But if, if uh, Director Fedorchuk has anything to say, he can uh, chime in here too. And just on my end, it's not uh, allocated in this year's budget, so it would have to be looked at for next year unless it was a you know purchase approved by council. But uh, I can definitely talk to CAO Pool about that. Okay. okay. Um, then our next thing. I'll just check uh, my time. Just one second. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I okay, guess so just to me, you know, adding lighting is a pretty small, small cost, especially to be to be neighborly for one thing, but also for such an important venue. You know, if you're having food needs struggling to come back or not wanting to come back, to me, putting up lights is a pretty small thing to do. And you know what? It not only helps your facilities, but it will illuminates our own facilities. It'll help help us too. So to me, it, it seems kind of like a no-brainer for, for the cost of putting up four or five lights uh, that, that's just my my thoughts though but uh thank you but because and i guess where after hearing the, the response from this year's rodeo and how bad people missed it i think it really drives people home how i don't think it was a doubt in anybody's mind but drives people home how important that is to our community so 
But I think it's something that we definitely need to look at. Well, the food boost, they put through a pile of money through their food boost this year. So uh, all this money turns into this town and it keeps turning about, what is it, seven times before the money leaves? You know, so. Well, there's no doubt that the, the uh, service groups that, that operate the booths are very important. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I think one thing that's clear to everybody is those grounds are not just used at rodeo time. Like other organizations use it all other types of years. Stampeders have used the grandstands for training. I think you guys use it for snow removal on the grounds. Um, like it's used by everybody, the dog park. So it's not just benefit, like I agree with you. It's, it's to be neighborly and to help it go through, but it's not just benefiting us. It's benefiting all the organizations that use those grounds. Um, especially like you've got employees that are there. You know, if somebody's got to go in there to work at night, having lights at night is also a safety issue because they're parking around behind the back door, you know, and they got to get out and unlock gates if the gates are locked, you know, to get back there. So it is, yeah. Cause it's been not just a food booth, like our beer garden area has been trash. Um, people hiding under the grandstands, people drinking in the grandstands. And it's not just the homeless people, it's people's kids, you know, that are up there doing that. So our bingo booth, like the band booster, they've disbanded. Um, but I think that was a shelter for a while. You know, we spent a good day cleaning and uh, disinfecting that building so that we could use it. So there's, it's all, all over those grounds. You know, we've just been lucky, I think, that the barns haven't been hit, but I think they worked because yeah, I think every single building. Friday night, I kicked one person out of the band booster building mm -hmm. twice within a half an hour. So you, you throw them. Can we lock the gates? Like, can the town, when they go home at 4.30, 5 o'clock, can they lock that west gate by the arena? So just before we get to that question, I know Council Morio had his hand up for, for a little while, okay. so I'll let him go, and then I'll let... Director Fedorchuk answer that question, okay? So we'll go ahead, Council Morial. Yeah, um, I'm all in favor of uh, like increasing the lighting on there, and I would suggest that uh, like uh, when Brent, uh, Director Fedorchuk talks with CEO Poole, um, that they uh, lays on with a uh, few uh, individuals to set up like a priority lighting plan that area and just a suggestion to council administration is that we did set aside the funds in the crime prevention reserve that might be able to tap in for this year to do a few things for that along with any other stuff that we have in your bar for that so, um, but uh, as for protective services if there's people that are um, defecating between the outside arena and the uh, the, the skating rink, then that becomes a, a health issue there also. So uh, that might be something we'll have to take a look at uh, in the short term. Okay. Um, uh, Director Fedorchuk, the question was to lock the gates that night. And as far as the gates go, we, we can lock them. The concern from RCMP is that they can't patrol with their vehicles then. Uh, there's arguments on either side whether you know, locking the gates will prevent people from loading vehicles and taking their own, taking items out, or but preventing RCMP to come in. It's a it's a debate. I think that's been going on for quite some time. Uh, as far as us locking it, that's not a problem in the summertime. The wintertime, it becomes a bit of an issue when you get a couple feet of snow, or um, the boys are working alone. Uh, our maintenance staff usually work alone past you know 10 p.m. So it becomes a working alone kind of issue to be able to lock that gate. Currently in our Working loan policy, they leave through the front of the arena um, and then um, exit, exit that way so they're safe when they get in their vehicles. Um, that's the only concern from our end, but anybody's have any input on that? I'm not really concerned in the deep, deep steps of in, winter. In the wintertime, there's not that big of a problem. It's summertime. In when spring it's and fall. warm weather, that's when they're moving around. Can we just give the RCMP a key? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, give it The RCMP have a key. Okay, that's I'm just thinking locking the gate's not going to keep them up. No, just from getting like heavier equipment in, like if they're going to be, like if they're going to pull in and empty out a food booth, they'll be able to move a lot more in a vehicle than 
because they've been stripping copper from food booths and so, <laughs> have the food booth people not taken their stuff out of there yeah but they should strip the copper wire out of the kinsman booth out of the walls oh yeah. the walls yeah they just cut oh, straight above the panel box and then took two thousand dollars worth of copper peeled right. it off the walls right back to every box and then took zip cut off in front of every box and just left with this much wire so they had to rewire two whole booths i mean that's a lot if you got two thousand dollars worth of wire you don't just drag that out by hand that goes in a truck i think that if it's if it's uh, like somebody mentioned with the rcp have uh keys to get into the bag grounds? Well, well, I mean, the issue is severe enough that the RCMP don't want to store their items on our property. They need, they moved their stuff out because they wanted a safer storage area. <laughs> their off is a half a block away from where they stored it. <laughs> so they have, you're sure they have keys? They do, because when I changed locks, because at the time they yeah. needed into their building, they have keys to our locks. <clears throat> has anybody, like, don't get me wrong, but has anybody been on the fairgrounds at 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, just driving around? You should. You should go for a drive some evening. If the gate's not locked. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, you should see what's happening in there. Yeah, and so. we're, we're forced to maybe reconsider storing uh, trailers and the RCMP stuff because... We just don't want to put up with all the vandalism. All the trailers were trashed this winter. We are doing, uh, we are putting in a security system in our office. Stan Anderson is starting on today, and he's putting door sensors in every food booth. So that's another step we're doing to. Uh, <clears throat> um, first of all, folks, thank you very much for all the efforts for the Northwest Roundup. It's, it's muchly appreciated, and you're right, the dollars that are generated within our community generally stay within our community and generate more dollars. So that is something um, on the economic development side of things that is very great for the community. And without your organization and the volunteers, um, we wouldn't have that. So I commend you for all your efforts um, with that, and we appreciate that. I just want to talk a little bit about some of the comments and uh, um, issues surrounding um, your copper wire and out of the food booths and things like that. I can assure you that there's no, that from what I've seen, what I deal with and, and see on other committees and hear about it, it's not going out by truckloads as one would suspect. It's little pieces at a time because it's easier to um, not detect it. So. Um, I promise, I can almost assure you that it's not big trucks going in there and unloading copper wire and, and things like that. Uh, I do strongly suggest that uh, that we could have the conversation or your per permission for COPP to uh, patrol that area too and then citizens on patrol. Yeah. Um, we were to reach out to you last year and then we didn't have an opportunity, but we do have 22 members available for that and we'd be more than happy to um, patrol that area too. The only thing for us and our team is that those gates need to be open. We will not allow our team to go in there walking on their own. So uh, for, for myself, in my opinion, I would highly recommend to keep those gates open so that we can patrol and so that you can get so in. Do that. I think um, they should be open. Lighting for sure it helps um, and being able to disturb the peace, so to speak, by driving in and, and patrolling in there. We, our team, are all equipped with lights as well to shine in and look for look for those type of things. We do work closely with the RCMP um, and other other organizations, and if we are seeing those uh, repeat offenders, we have the ability to reach out to a specific group and target those individuals and then address what's going on. And I I had the opportunity to tour your grounds more than or the grounds on more than one occasion in the evening and late into the nights, early mornings. It's astounding what you do see. Uh, unfortunately, it is a place that is um, not noticed from the street when no one's really looking or paying attention. So it is one of those areas that um, is a hideout, so to speak. And I assure you that crime is happening all over in the community. It's not just your, not just the ag grounds. And I definitely have sympathy and I hear um, hear the calls of, of despair when it comes to stripping copper wire and, and the vandalism that happens. I, I, I 
like my heart hurts for those groups because it's hard enough to make make money and fundraise for other opportunities for other things in the community and to have that happen is devastating. However, saying that if we are able to work with COPP and hopefully you give us permission to, to yeah. patrol the, You have our permission. Yeah, leave the eights open. To yes. patrol the grounds, we will make sure that that happens. It's in our reports. We do share that with the RCMP consistently. So I would like to see that again, lighting. I'm a firm believer that lights uh, help deter crime and, and people notice, right? So that's something that we should look at. Um, what, what I would recommend to is, um, is, I mean, obviously they're not going to be ripping around, but have them drive out in the track and go around there as well, because those, well, you can kind of go one way. You can go well, all the way around to that gate that's closed. The south gate on the infield and the north gate on the infield are closed, but you can go in by the south end of the grandstand yeah. and go two thirds of the way around to the beer garden. Because then they wouldn't even have to get out of their vehicle to see the grandstand. They could drive in front of it okay. and shine their lights. The other thing that we want to do is we want to remove some of that white fence from by the beer gardens and switch it up to chain link uh, once we get the, the finances and the funds so that it would be more visible if somebody driving by. Roy and I are taking that white fence down tomorrow at 4.30. There we go. <laughs> And so <laughs> the more visibility that you can have, the better. Um, and if there are opportunities to create less barriers for the team to drive through, um, that's all the better as well. And I will ensure that that goes out to our members immediately and, and we can uh, start seeing those patrols happening. And we would be most, yeah, and without sharing the information with the RCMP, we can provide updates as well on how many patrols have been um, through your area as well. So I will give Karina, she is the uh, coordinator for COPP, um, a heads up on that and you can reach out there and share some information. So you said you, you provide reports? We do, yes. Okay. So if there's, for yourselves, for example, we'd be able to tell you exactly how many times that uh, we patrolled in that area. Um, so we can give you our executive's email address and then you guys can just fire her off the email. Absolutely, so I will get Karina to be in touch with you. She takes care of that information for us. You're at Pitford Workshop. Hey, I just one more thing to add. Uh, we did lock the gates for a period of time. I believe it was last summer. And just some of the feedback we got was uh, just on the dog park as well, too. There's that small dog park that's on the other side of those gates. And people were quite frustrated that they couldn't get there. Again, just like additional feedback that we heard just so everybody kind of knows. Thanks. OK. Last, oh, sorry. I think that uh, CL pool is first. Uh, just so you know, the town has that requested the same thing from the RCMP to unlock our gates for our property. And we're not successful. There's liabilities and responsibilities involved with that. So it's understandable that they would say no, but and also precedent. If, if they do it for one, they must do it for all. So that's kind of the answers we were given when we asked them to uh, to take a look at the land for the county response. But as Deputy Mayor Tony said, the security system is an excellent idea, so they would respond when somebody's there and see what they can to control uh, Council Bob. So, am I under the impression that the Ag Society is going to go ahead and put lighting around the booth right now? Yeah. You're on here. Well, I've started looking into what the steps of what needs to happen before we start boring holes like hydro, MTS, line locates. I, I'm just wondering if we're looking at lighting on the arena or something, should be for something that, I don't know, is there a lighting expert or something that we can coordinate together with you to share for saying, like, maybe we don't need, we need two big ones instead of 10 little ones or... Yeah, we're using Ron Galbraith if you want to coordinate yeah. with him. But I'm just saying, is there a lighting expert? Is there something better, like LED or... Oh, we'll be using I'll be determined that. we'll be using LAD because they're the cheapest, well, yeah, brighter and wicked bright, yeah. yeah. And probably the thing is not easily breakable. Something right. where it's like a wire cage or something over top. Last, going back to the gates. Last fall, when the curling rink opened up, before it snowed, every day the curling rink opened the gates and left them open. I then talked to Kent, Maine, I said, you know, these gates have to be closed. Well, we can't open them when it snows. And I said, it hasn't snowed yet. They opened the gate at the 
on ninth on the north side of the arena between the arena and the old kinsman pool and the main gate so i asked him to leave the gates closed until they had a bond spiel then they needed to use our parking lot he didn't and two days later his truck was smashed so this is why i wanted these gates closed because they just come in and they just all over the place after it snows the gates were open and that was fine because that's when everything starts to taper off you know but i think leslie wanted to to she had some points she wanted to make before we run out of time too okay. i was just going to say realistically how many gates need to be kept open one right now there's one by the arena in my mind from what i've seen driving around that's the only one that should be kept open so that it, it accommodates everybody it accommodates the staff it accommodates people walking the dogs i don't know if that's the gate the trucks come in when they dump the snow no probably for a little while yeah so i mean we have keeps yeah in yeah. the winter time they're the north gates open also yeah but we're not concerned about the winter time anyways because no. they can't get anywhere no um i was just gonna say I guess the one thing to kind of remain important and to just keep in mind, I mean, it's been a joint venture for 120 years with the town and the egg society. I mean, I think I refer to it as the island. You know, I mean, that island is the property of the egg society. So it's 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 just something I guess that I want everybody just to keep in the back of their minds. It's just the fact that it's been a long standing relationship. And I mean, we wouldn't have the rodeo if it wasn't for town involvement, you know, and I think we've also kind of given back to the town as well, you know, by some of the stuff we've done. So I'm just hoping going forward that we can keep, you know, a good relationship going. Um, and I think something too is, it, it's slightly off topic, but it's something we, we need to arrange a meeting to kind of go over some of the agreements. Um, there was, there's talk about, there was gentlemen's agreements like 50 years ago, but I don't know if there's anything on paper. And I think we just need to revisit that and just make sure for everybody's benefit that it's there because it's come up in the past with, well, who's responsible for cleaning what? Who's responsible for cleaning this? It's, oh, I think so, so, you know, I think for everybody, it was just written out. Yeah, uh, just on, on, well, before we get too far, yeah. but on the crime thing, I think that there needs to be some continuing uh, yep. communications with, if it's the curling club or parks and recreation with uh, our administration as well and the lighting and all that i think that you guys get that all kind of sorted out and talk with our administration um and then i'm continuing on talking with copp and with the rcmp you know and, and all of us just kind of being vigilant about it as far as the agreements and all that i have to agree with you uh, something that we were talking about i think about maybe three years ago before COVID came, that there are, there has been some uh, some issues as far as what kind of spits and handshakes have been done yeah. in the past yeah. 120 years, yeah. and and it needs to uh, to be kind of ironed out a little bit for future generations. So that's something that we're not going to be able to figure out right now. But I'm glad that you brought it up because yes, we do need to uh, to formalize something with as far as what our relationship. And what, did you have anything else? I was just going to say what exactly what Lamb says. <laughs> no need think, for me to say anything. I think People have made the handshake are no longer here. So we don't know what they, <laughs> we've, we've learned. We've learned. Yeah. 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 Councilor Bob. So am I under the impression that Mr. Galvis will be notified that he needs to speak to the town if there's any lighting that's going to be going on the side of our building to help things again to coordinate. Used. Yeah, I can I can talk with Mr. Galbraith about that the town would possibly like some lighting on the back of the Centennial Arena, and he can think about how that would play into the lighting we were looking at. But it would be he. But he, I won't order the lighting. I'll just notify him. Make sure we don't say go or stop until we contact you or we're together on it. Yeah. The rec director would be in contact. With you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, there's no sense doing everything twice. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Do we want to assign a key person on our end to communicate with the town? 
I'll so do. Not- I'll be the light in person, okay. and he's the gates person. <laughs> the gatekeeper. The gatekeeper. There you are. And, and Leslie's uh, you gonna and I can keep on talking about the, the contracts. Uh, the contracts. Yeah, together. she's yeah. agreements. Yep. Yeah. All right. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Hey, Leslie. Grab Brand. Okay, other delegations. We don't have the staff sergeant here yet. Apparently not. Okay. So we'll be able to later. He said that he was coming. Okay. I'll send him a text here in a second. Couple minutes. Uh, so then we'll move on to uh, 6, 6.1, to receive the building permit applications. Result of the building permits from 39.22 through 41.22 with a total estimated value of $13,000 be received. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Montoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Seven, seven point one. Result of the director of public works report be received. Moved by Councilor Bobic, seconded by Deputy Mayor Montoni. Discussion. I guess he's he's out of the room right now. But uh, if there's anything there that's uh, can be made. Then uh, maybe we can take note of it and have it answered later. Councilor Bob. Um, wondering about the uh, yellow lines down Main Street, down the roads. We don't seem to have any down or no MITs coming with roads here. Or do we have any idea of when that would happen? I asked that question actually to the, uh, to the director here a couple um, weeks ago, actually, for rodeo. And he checked and uh, MTI has said that um, they contract part of the problems out. And one of the problems has been is that the pigment, the yellow pigment, there's an issue with a shortage because it all comes from a place in Texas. And so there's been a shortage of it. And so they're hoping, that was two weeks or three weeks ago, so they're hoping that uh, um, they would be getting to it soon. In towns where it was held up for the exact same. <clears throat> there's no way to can temporarily put white in. Like, I mean, there's no line thing. I'm sorry. I, I don't think they would put white for their standards and specification reasons, but and the money. We, we could we perhaps ask again to see what the, if they are, because I think that what happens, what I understand, the, when it's contracted out, if they, if they don't get it done in a timely fashion, whenever the other crews get done, then they come and, and finish up. So we're second on the list to that job. I suppose it's to do all to do with this pigment, from what I understood. For the discussion, Councilor Bob or Doria, what, how's the uh, environmental assessment that we've been going? With that that was. Is that, have we got the report back on that? Uh, not the final report. Not at least if we have. I don't know if we have. Uh, I <coughs> rumblings of what they found, but I would be, I would want to comment on it. So, so we need we need that final report to, to enter into like the design phase, correct? That's correct. Council Friesen. Uh, Darren doesn't have it on, but uh, we're having a cemetery meeting next week um, here at 11 o'clock, but he's going to notify the committee. It's in regards to uh, some rumblings about uh, things going missing and et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to try and get that all ironed out so people don't think we're stealing stuff, which we aren't. Great. Good. Uh, I'm glad that you brought that up because... Uh I think there's been plenty of notice and also there's been a date selected for the fall cleanup and that's going to be on October the 15th. 
Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.2 Result of the Fire Chief's Protected Services Report for July 2022 be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Other reports? 7.4, something that I missed and I feel really bad that I did at the beginning of council, and that is that uh, we did hear the news uh, this past weekend that uh, Reed Passman from the Thomas Bozeman had passed away. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's so sorry to, to hear that. And I have passed on our condolences to Marilyn and his family and the people of Manitoba's Bullsman and also counsel um, for the loss of Walter. Walter um, served uh, a number of years on Manitoba's Bullsman in the capacity of counselor and also as uh, Reeve um, recently and, uh, and several other different uh, committees that each of you have worked on with him. Uh, we may have not always agreed on everything and uh, but we always worked on the things that were better and, and for the betterment of the Swan River Valley. So I think it would be appropriate for us to take a, a moment and uh, and uh, think of uh, our good friend, Mr. Passman. In peace. I'll uh, begin uh, with uh, Council's report with Councilor Bob. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I just have been speaking with Mr. Harvey on some of the crushed asphalt that's been laying out. I probably, if we could get together with Jordan, maybe this week, I'd like to speak a little bit about that. There's some different ideas that maybe bring forward. Uh, and you know what? We don't take them out of their way. I'm pretty flexible, so whenever it's good for you, it's be a rainy day, and, and, and there's no hurry. Um, with that, um, brought up removal of useful items out of the landfill here a few weeks ago. I was just wondering if that's gone forward or where we're going with that. Too. Yeah, like if people ask and they can get it without having to disturb anything, okay. then they let them. But uh, if people are like climbing on it or pulling stuff, exactly. then they say no because. Like they do push it up periodically and they don't want you know someone to pull something over and okay very good just out of the another concern is reliability of information so yeah so it's just something that okay. they can get off the ground and if they ask her so that's noted that if somebody needs out to use a, a wheel for a lawnmower and there happens to be one there they're more than welcome as long as they ask prior to ask and them. don't have to move stuff around to get it oh thank you <laughs> um the doctor did Yellow lines intersection at Hydro for the stop. Has there been any information brought forward on that at all, or where are we with that intersection? Last when I checked in uh, with MTI contact, he was waiting for information from his superiors. So I'll touch base again. It'll probably end up being a winter uh, consultation. That one, okay, so it seems like it's a I spoke a little while, quite a while ago, actually, on the watershed. And I, I call it a water park, but it actually, don't get me wrong, it's not a pool or anything like that, with that uh, snow dumping site that we have on the other side of town. Now, would that be something that council would feel we would move forward with watershed to give the council some ideas of what could be done there, or is that something we should just leave alone? Like, I guess what I'm asking is, I don't have any other plan for that at right? this point. Currently, we're just going to get a survey done just okay. to see where it's lying and if it's possible to drain it. And then it would be up to 
council and the rec department if they wanted to turn it into a park or whatever. I do believe there is some grounds available for something like this, so that's what I'm just going to kind of ask if this is going to go forward. Then we can ask Watershed to see what is available, I guess. So I don't interest council and where we would take it. So the water park would be something like a walking trail, it's a collection area with trees planted, and not just my idea, that's not. But there is grounds available through the watershed that we may be able to obtain. Bring that up at the next meeting at Watershed if that's the council's wishes. Why? It doesn't cost anything. No, I was going to say it doesn't cost anything. Uh, also, with that, with the watershed, uh, the dumping that's going out at the landfill now, they level it up. It looks really good. Like it looks excellent. I'm just wondering if you would, watershed, should look at seeding that to something. Is that something the council will be looking at, or are you just going to leave it behind? Uh, eventually it'll get seeded. Uh, okay. uh, the watershed also has seeding equipment and all that sort of stuff too, and they have all the different varieties and stuff. We probably would be able to give you some information on what would grow there and what would be better for that area. So if you don't mind, I can bring that forward and send the information your way. And just to thank you to your worship for bringing that moment of silence up for Walter. I had the same idea. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good idea. Uh, and no meetings to report on, but uh, just want to let everybody know where I'm Libraries have a fundraising with barbecue. It's kind of our fundraiser for the year on October 1st, which is a Saturday. So you should all come out and grab a burger. Um, and that is it for me. Where? At the library. At the library. Yeah. October the first. Okay, thank you. Lots of more. Um, nothing for me this week. Just uh, my personal condolences to uh, Reed Pasnick's family and to uh, the condolences um, to their his family for his son's loss. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Council Friesen. I'm uh, meeting at uh, Communities of Care. We have a new program coordinator, Ms. Kateki, who is now working for us. Um, the museum uh, is having a concert and dance on the 26th. It's a fundraiser. And then on the 28th is the Harvest Festival, where everybody can go there. It's free to go in. There's kids' games, um, demos of all the old equipment. Sheep, sheeping, sheep, sheets, sheets, making sheets. Um, Gonna do some trashing. Yeah. Okay. And fresh bread in the oven, in the outdoor uh, clay oven. And then there's a supper after that in the hall, and it's twenty dollars. And there's tickets at uh, sometimes I believe and Merv's, and at the office of the museum. Um, your worship asked about a butterfly garden. I looked it up. It's a whole lot more complicated than just saying this is where the butterflies go. Anyway, I'm still looking at that. And I don't know if everybody read Dr. Cody's article in the paper, but it was excellent. Um, I think that's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, just in terms of meetings, Councillor Deloria and myself, we did attend a uh, planning district meeting um, where the audit for 2021 was approved and those, uh, uh, the financials were approved from, from that. So I think that was the last audit that we were waiting for, I hope. Um, there may be one more, um, but that one's done. And of course, my condolences on behalf of uh, myself, Council, uh, to the municipality of Minnetonka Springs, and to uh, Ruth Passman's family. Other than that, we're wishing you Okay. All right. And I, everything else has pretty, been, pretty, pretty much been covered off. So uh, I think we can uh, continue from there unless uh, CEO Poole has anything to add. Uh, no, I have no report for Council. I will. September. Okay. <clears throat> so moving on to 10, 10.1. 
Resolve with the, the accounts as well will be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29247 to 29249, totaling $15,174.91 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5144 to number 5152, totaling $120,726.03 as listed on Schedule B. Payroll accounts checks number 5153 to 5160, totaling $101,543.11 as listed on Schedule C. And direct deposits totaling $42,580.20 as listed on Schedule D. Moved by <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Bobbitt. Uh, I don't see any check that you're uh, they, He may not have done one, so if you have a question on check, then see if Obanita would be willing to answer those for you. You have nothing? No, I am to me, I guess. <laughs> do you like, do you like when yeah. he, he does? Yeah, most of us feel like that, but uh, <laughs> I guess he's realizing, wow, they do pay attention to yeah. that. <laughs> So, uh, CFO Ganita, you know that that's appreciated. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.2 Resolve the financial statements for the seven months ending July 31st, 2022, be adopted as received. Moved by Dr. Marilyn Tony, seconded by Councilor Bobic. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Resolved the 2000, that the 2022 annual contribution to the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation incorporated for the fund for the recruitment and retention of medical professionals calculated at $16 per capita in, amount, in amounting to $64,784 be approved for payment. Moved by <clears throat> Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.4. Uh, Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252-1A of the Act. And whereas sufficient time has been allowed for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A, totaling $1,301.45. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding tax, property tax rule and collected in that manner under subsections 252 of the Act. Be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes effective September the 1st, 2022. Moved by <clears throat> Councillor Bobbick, seconded by Councillor or Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? Uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Just a question on uh, <clears throat> the last uh, invoice there ending in 91, haul vehicles to storage. Are we providing storage of some sort? And if so, are we charging for that storage? I'm not sure. I, I don't understand what that one is. So. Uh, Chief I guess, yeah, I can answer too, but uh, go ahead, Chief Fedorchuk. Um, that was uh, storage of vehicles that were claimed during a bylaw camp on 6th Avenue North. Um, they went to, uh, I guess, a private company to do it for us, uh, and that is being charged back to the owner. The, not only the hauling, but the storage as well, correct? Yes. Correct. Yeah, okay. That all costs. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councillor Morial. Um, looking at, like, these are two properties that keep coming back to us on 
the same issues. Uh, can the administration uh, just generate a report of how much of these funds have uh, tallied up so far to date on this? So just uh, curious to see what the additional cost of, um, is being incurred and putting on taxes for these two tax rules. Yeah, we can do that. <coughs> Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Okay, 13. Resolve the pursuance, pursuant to sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act Council going to committee and close the meeting to the public. We have purchased services, town growth plan, and federal boundary proposal. And one more? Maybe. Okay. No, just uh, go ahead. Um, what do you have? It'll be uh, in terms of a, uh, I guess it's still a legal issue. A legal issue? Yes. Okay. A legal issue? Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Balvick. All in favor? It's carried over in camera. Okay. Result of this regular meeting of council will be now adjourned at 9.38 p.m. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Balvick. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Good night.